trying to work everything out, so hopefully everybody's having more fun than non-fun. But it's about to get a hell of a lot better because we have got a real treat for you guys today. I mean, you know, every now and then you, you, you get to meet like someone that I consider to be a great in the world of comics, one of the comic greats. But how often do you get to see two, le what I consider legends in this industry up on the stage? And, and you know, we knew Stan was going to do a Q&A, but the idea of John Romita Jr. getting to moderate that Q&A, I think makes it like a hundred times cooler. Yeah. So I'm going to shut the hell up and bring him on out. Stan Lee, John Romita Jr. I will give it back. 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 I will give it
here. All right, it's nice to meet you. I'll give you your award. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Stanley. Before you clap, I have to tell you that I didn't see anybody even. <laughs> Uh, I met you in 1972, and I came up to the office in between uh, school, class, school semesters. My father brought me up. I met Jack, uh, uh, Don Heck, uh, Larry, your brother Larry Lieber, and all of the, the bullpen. This is when the artists worked in the bullpen. There were guys working in the bullpen. Jack didn't work in the bullpen. Steve Ditko was up there. I met all of these wonderful people, and he was there. And Wait a minute. He said all the wonderful people. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's an editor. No matter what I do, he's an editor. <laughs> so you're wonderful then, you're wonderful now. But that was in 19, possibly 1968 or 69, maybe earlier than 70. So I know you were close to, to 45 years. Whether you remember me or not, I knew that long. You're not that memorable. <laughs> I'm the straight man up here. Can you believe this? <laughs> Handing him these lines on a silver platter. <laughs> uh, so I want to tell you how much of a pleasure it's been working for Marvel. I say it's because I had my father work for the company and my mother also worked for the company. It's a Sicilian thing, but I, it was great. <laughs> working with you, Marvel, has been so much fun. You have no idea. I, I, I don't, don't think I could have worked on any other job than doing this. I wouldn't have enjoyed it this much. And it's because of you. I can't stand it when people are genuinely nice. <laughs> <laughs> the old John Romita Jr. that I have known. I want to become, give me 30 seconds, I'll become a white ass. <laughs> so, in, in, in the fact that I'm introducing you, I want to tell you that this man has been introduced. He's been in the whole You said you wanted an introduction! <laughs> it's an honor and a privilege to give to you my boss, my godfather, and my second father, John Romita. <laughs>
Now, I only gave him the very simplest plot, and he would expand on it and add a lot of things, but we usually started with whatever simple little thought I would give him. And I had no plot, and it was deadline time, and the big thing you always need with a new book is a villain, because who's the super villain going to be? So I thought of a name. I said, what about a guy called Diablo? Boy, that sounds devilish. Draw me a Diablo. So Jack drew this great looking guy who looked like Di no, Diablo. That's what it was, Diablo. And I said, that's a great villain. And let's start. And I told him something. I don't remember what I told him. It was terrible. He drew it, made better. And the story came out, and it was another story. To this day, I don't remember what the story does was. I think it was a, a horrible story. Did you ever read it? Did you ever see it? Did anybody ever see a fantastic book featuring Diablo? See, nobody even remembers it. It's the one thing I did that I wished I hadn't done, because I don't know what it was. That was it. So it's near perfection. All right, but everything else I did. Oh. Spider-Man, because uh, it was such an amazing, horrible, horrible moment. But I'd say if I had to pick one thing, it was probably A Man Without Fear I did with Frank Miller. And the worst thing, I keep on getting copies of this book pushed in front of me, is probably something to do with, uh, with Dazzler. <laughs> the Dazzler. I <laughs> Stan creates Galactus. <laughs> uh, I think Dazzler was great. The first issue I did with Spider-Man was two midget terrorists. <laughs> That's like me. All right, all right, there you go. And Stan creates the Silver Surfer. I created the Mud Monster, which was a creation which was Hydro and Sandman that got punched together and oh, becomes terrific. the Mud Monster. So my three greatest moments in comics history have been those three. But my greatest moment, I have to say the most proudest uh, piece of work was Man Without Fear with Frank Miller. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. See, I remember all my, my bad stuff. Stan, Stan remembers only one bad well, I only did one bad <laughs> Do you remember? Hey, Stan. You've done tons and tons of cameos for the Marvel films. I got two little things. One, how does that work? Do you just show up one day and it's like, hey Stan, let's get you in this one scene? Or is it written in advance? And my other thing is, which cameo is your all-time favorite? My cameo, I heard the second part, I missed the third part. Sure. How does that work with the cameos? Do you force yourself upon the director? Or <laughs> You may not know me well, <laughs> but even in the little that you see me, do I look like the kind of guy who would force myself? <laughs> All I do is I cry and I yell and I scream if I don't get a cameo. <laughs> now they they have asked me to do these, and I got to admit I, I love it. I'm a ham. I love doing them. Wait till you see me in Captain America. Wait till you, wait till you see me. No, that's not one. I'm gonna watch. I guarantee you, the Spider-Man one is the funniest one you will ever see. You must have. Oh, and I'll tell you something else. I didn't do one for the X-Men. For some reason, they didn't call me. Maybe it was because they shot most of it out of the country, and I didn't want to travel that far. But the point is, I'm not in it. But I figured out the reason they didn't try to get me. They are so shrewd. They figure without me, it'll sell more tickets. And I'll tell you why. People will go to the movie, and when they come out, they'll say, wait a minute, we didn't see Stan's cameo. We must admit it. <laughs> 